In this video, I want to show you how to use a little program I've written to determine the principal stress axes from the tractions on an arbitrarily oriented cube within a stress field. And we're going to use a method called eigenvalue decomposition for this. Here's the code. It's written in Mathematica. It uh, has this little uh, statement here that it's an unfinished draft subject to revision. That's probably true of all of the codes that I write. Let's just take a quick look at what we've got in here. There's some explanation. The input is a symmetric 3D matrix. This is a stress matrix on some arbitrary cube. And we're going to analyze that. This is just to remind you what those terms mean. And so sigma xx, so the normal stress acting on the x plane in the x direction here has a value of 2. Now all of the values that we're going to use as input in these little pink boxes are positive values or unsigned values to be more specific. Now I understand that there is such a thing in the world as a negative normal stress, but for the moment this code is only going to work with positive values. I can change that value from a 2 to a 3 to a 4 just by highlighting the value and typing in whatever number I want. But for the moment, let's just go with 2. So that's true of all of the six input data. So there is sigma xx, sigma yy, the normal stress acting on the y plane in the y direction. Sigma ZZ, the normal stress acting on the Z plane in the Z direction. Sigma XY, the shear stress acting on the X plane in the Y direction. Sigma XZ, the shear stress acting on the X plane in the Z direction. And Sigma YZ, the shear stress acting on the Y plane in the Z direction. From these six components, we can reconstruct all of the stresses all the way around this cube on all six of its faces. So there are nine stresses represented here, but because, um, for example, sigma zy is conjugate with sigma yz, these two shear stresses have the same magnitude. Because of that, we only have six numbers that we need to supply to this. So as soon as we have those input data in place, we can come up here to evaluate notebook, and off it goes. And what does it do? Well, it finds the eigenvalues of the um, matrix that we have input, and the results are provided. The principal axes of the ellipse are given as vectors here. Sigma 1, the greatest principle of stress, is 2.77, more or less. And here is its orientation. Sigma 2 has a magnitude of 1.52, more or less. And here is its orientation. And here is sigma 3. Graphically, I produced a, a little figure that has plotted out several points along this ellipse. And you can get inside this figure and rotate it around so you can see for yourself what's going on. Okay. And if we scroll a little bit further down, we see a slightly more informative illustration. It's the same thing. We've just wrapped all those points with a surface. The axes are the least principal stress, greatest principal stress, and intermediate principal stress. Okay, so Along the least principal stress axis, you can see the shortest dimension across this ellipse. And then along the intermediate principal stress axis, you can see the intermediate principal stress, and in this view you can also see the maximum principal stress. Oftentimes in structural geology, we want to think about 
the greatest contrast in the uh, stress ellipse, and that occurs between the maximum principal stress and the minimum principal stress, sigma 1 and sigma 3. So that's a quick look at this program, how you can uh, input data from an arbitrarily oriented cube within a stress field, input the tractions on all of the faces, and output the principal stresses in a way that's useful.